You know those projects that you start with the best of intentions? Well, we have a lot of those here on the farm. And what I've slowly and not so patiently been learning is that you really do need to be patient because these big projects that we're tackling, like putting in a garden or making all this food grow from our two acres that we live on here, it all takes effort and it all takes time. So it took a year to get this greenhouse saved up for, purchased, delivered, and pieced together. And now that it's been put together for a year, we still need to do the final bit of getting electricity run to the greenhouse so that we can use it for year round growing here on the farm. Last year, the greenhouse was little more than a glorified potting shed. It got incredibly hot during the summertime. We didn't take the time to do the floor, which allowed the weeds to go to seed. It's just a complete mess. This year, we're determined to make use of all these spaces that we've already invested time and effort into. The greenhouse was top of the list. So first up is clearing it out. But regardless of what work we're doing, we still have to eat. I would like to thank Maiden for sponsoring today's video. There is a lot to love about their entire stainless steel line. You don't have to worry about seasoning it. It cleans up really, really well. And my favorite part, it's so lightweight. The founders of Made In, Chip and Jake, have been motivated by their 100-year family history in the kitchen supply business to really reshape the kitchen supply landscape with exceptionally made-to-last kitchenware. They partner with the best raw material providers. Their stainless steel is made in Italy, and it really builds superior kitchen products. Their kitchenware are used in multiple three-star Michelin restaurants, and they've received over 100,000 five-star reviews. You can use the link below the video to save on your first order with Made In. Made In Stainless Collection is premium five-ply stainless steel, and these layers allow for superior heat retention, even heating, and ease of heat control. I love that it can go from the stovetop to the oven, which is how I'm gonna be using it today, up to 800 degrees. I love this entire collection. I use it every single day, multiple times a day, and I know that you will too. Use the link below the video to save on your first order with Made In. Okay, so today is about getting that greenhouse heated and making sure that it's gonna be safe for citrus trees and safe for planting. But the thing about working outside is that you need to have food thought of so that when you come inside, you have some sustenance waiting for you. Let's make some food. You wanna know something that people don't know about stainless steel? What's that? It's naturally nonstick, but there's a trick. You have to heat it up before you put your butter or your oil in. If you put it in cold, it won't work. If you let it get hot and then you put your fan in, nonstick. Did you know that? I did not. Most people don't know that. There you go. How hot does it have to be? You know, like when you put a drop of water in it, it should go mm. Anyway, I'm gonna ground the meat, get potatoes. You kinda can't go wrong, can you, with ground meat? Food for all. And today is gonna be extra special because we're gonna add in some lamb too. We got all our lamb back from the butcher. This is still mostly frozen. That's all right. That's why I love this dish. It seems like every time we do ground meat, it is mostly frozen. Ground meat, it's like your get out of jail free meat. It's like, I forgot to defrost a roast. So I'm just gonna pull out some ground meat and I'll just cook it frozen. I don't really even know why we defrost it. Why do, there's no point. You just stick it in, frozen. It's easier to cook because when it's not. <laughs> it goes a little faster. It goes faster. Yeah, but I'm gonna put a lid on this. It'll cook down pretty quickly. And then we'll put in the rest of our veg. Sounds good. These potatoes held pretty well. They did. They're sprouting a little bit, but that's to be expected. Yeah. So how are you feeling about the greenhouse project on the whole? Um, it feels good to have power. Yeah. Running to it and just in time because it looks like we're gonna have at least a, a night of negative 10 degrees. Which is frigid. Pretty cold. Yeah. And it's gonna work its way back up eventually to yeah. maybe 20s or so. It's gonna take a few days. So 
uh, it'll be a good test, I think, to see what will actually happen inside the greenhouse. I have a thermometer in there right now that records the lows and the highs yeah. each day. So our little heating unit yep. is supposed to be able to heat uh, and keep it within a range. So hopefully that range will be Do you think we'll need to crank it up at nighttime when it uh, gets a bit colder? I Yes, yeah. And giving it a few days to kind of see what it does before we put the citrus in there. Yeah, I think I'm definitely gonna hold off on putting those trees out there because some of them can go, some of them can go to zero, which is really cold for a citrus tree, but some can't go below 32. Right. And yeah. they've been babied for years. It would be such a shame to put them out and have something go wrong. Yeah. So we gotta be confident that it's gonna <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> do what it's supposed to do. But I did have an idea yesterday that I think is worth looking into. Okay. I think I'm gonna, I, I would like to get, you know, a big piece of greenhouse plastic one that would actually fit over our whole greenhouse and use it as an extra layer of protection. Mm, like one whole plastic one flexible full, sheet right. to go over the frame. Right, just like you would is. use if you didn't have the rigid panels. You know, yeah. you would just use the, the roll. Yeah, um, and the just sheet. to seal up all the cracks and just make sure make that nothing's sure. getting yeah. out. And then you have like a double yeah. layer of, yeah. um, of greenhouse insulation or whatever. Yeah. So I think that's going to be worth, okay. worth doing. Well, maybe we see how it does in the super cold temperatures over the next few days, then we'll have a really good idea kind of of what to expect because that's usually as cold as it gets here. I mean, negative 10 is, that's usually that's as low cold. as it goes. That's, that's really cold, cold here and yeah. it doesn't happen every year. And it doesn't stay that way for very long. And it doesn't stay that way for very long. But in the meanwhile, yeah, we'll just have to make sure that everything looks good in there because ideally this greenhouse will be a place to not only do plant stars in the spring, but potentially to grow in the winter time where we could be growing cilantro and spinach and green onions and mm -hmm. some of those cold weather crops that are quick harvests, radishes and things, yep. salad turnips. I mean, that would be pretty amazing to have mm -hmm. a supply of winter veg yeah. there, cold well, weather crops there. And the inside is roomy enough that you could do even like a cold frame on the inside or like a smaller greenhouse set up on the inside. Oh, I see. So you could even get even warmer. Triple insulation. And, and that, yeah, mm -hmm. but you know, when you do that, um, you end up almost with different zones. Sure. Inside. So you could potentially, if you had the heat and another little greenhouse set up on the inside, you could potentially have a pretty warm micro environment that you wow. can grow some greens or sprouts or so that kind of thing. Yeah, and, yeah. And. Yeah, or so. some warmer weather things, you know, that really can't go low. Or maybe even overwintering some of the things where you could dig up a pepper plant, mm -hmm. theoretically, yep. put it in a pot, put it in the greenhouse, even protect it further in the greenhouse and mm -hmm. potentially harvest from it. Yep. I mean, that's a huge season extender for us. Mm -hmm. So that's very exciting. Yep. So this is one of my oldest, most used, most tried and true recipes, and it is so incredibly humble and simple. I'm literally just gonna cook that ground meat until it's browned. I'm gonna add in potatoes, whatever dried seasonings I have or fresh herbs I have. I have a little bit of parsley still from the garden, a bunch of butter or olive oil or tallow, some sort of fat to kind of bring it all together. And then I'm just gonna put it in the oven and let it cook until the potatoes are tender. It's truly the most dead simple recipe, but it's one that people love. And then when it comes out, you can serve it with a sauce or you can just serve it as is with maybe some chopped greens over the top, maybe some more fresh herbs. You could add in some little tomatoes if you have them or roasted red pepper or, um, you know, just crumble some feta over the top. Endless possibilities, super simple ingredients.
Bean's being so cute. <laughs> You're being so cute. You coming? Yep. Okay. So here's the deal, guys. This poor greenhouse was put up last year and we used it for seed starting in the spring. And then we didn't use it all summer because there was no fan, it was so hot. Everything went to seed. It's just a total mess. So we are troubleshooting, getting our heater turned on so that we can actually use this to grow in the winter time. And it'll also fan so it'll cool off in the summertime and getting getting electricity out here, which makes a really big difference with a greenhouse. So thanks for thanks for your effort thus far. Honey. We're getting there. It's been <laughs> yeah. more challenging than I thought yes. it would be. But it always is. Every project is like that. So it always I shouldn't is. be surprised. You do it on paper and it and it looks a certain way and then you get to it and it's you know, it's just you gotta problem solve. Yep. So we finally have a few hours today where we can do that. Are you feeling, you're feeling pretty good about getting it hooked up? I am. It's okay. just, uh, I've gone through a few different iterations of my plan. Yeah. And second guessed myself on a couple of things, but I think I finally got there. But with a project like this, you kind of need the time to sit with it for a little bit mm -hmm. uh, so that you can actually think through everything. When yeah. it's not your, your main thing, you're you not don't. An electrician. You don't think like an electrician. <laughs> yeah. And uh, even electricians, you know, they have to problem solve on the yeah. job too, and they might think about routing things a certain way, and then you get into it, and you're like, actually, I could do it this this way instead. That might be yeah. better. So that's where. Well, and this is a funky one too, because it's a what? It's a two, tw two twenty. What is it? I'm what not gonna it? explain. <laughs> oh, forget it. It doesn't matter. Okay. While you work on that, I'm going to work on cleaning this up. So we put some pine shavings down behind me. Now this wouldn't be like my first choice of flooring for a greenhouse, but I wanted something to cover the weed tarp because I don't want all these weed seeds getting kicked up on it. It'll work now, it'll compress down. Um, and then maybe eventually as time and money allow, we could put, you know, a brick floor or something like we have in our woodshed. But for now, this'll work, right? Mm -hmm. It'll work. And sometimes you're just making it work. All right, let's work. Digging the trench was the priority of this project because we knew that the winter freeze was coming and that the snow was coming, which meant that we really needed to get that done first up. After the trench was dug, I took the time to clear things out of the greenhouse, clean them up, put some weed tarp down and cover that weed tarp with some pine shavings. Like I mentioned, this isn't my first choice, but this is what we needed to do to just get it covered and at least suppress the weeds for a while. Stuart has been doing a lot of research on figuring out how to get electricity run and he decided to tackle the project himself. It means problem solving. It means that things aren't perfect the first time, but because this heater that we're gonna be using has kind of a funky outlet, it's not your standard 120 plug. He had to get a little creative and learn some new things, which is really a great skill. We've learned a lot thus far. So the goal with this greenhouse isn't just to have a safe place for spring seedlings, but really to create an environment where we can grow things in containers through the winter time. Normally we take a break from gardening in the winter and that's a good thing, but there are a few things that I'd really like to be able to grow. And on top of that, we currently have 13 citrus trees living in our bedroom and they would be much happier to be outside where they can have a higher humidity and more sunlight every day. So really, this is about having a place that we can have our spring seedlings and grow throughout the winter and house our citrus trees that need a much warmer environment than we naturally have here in the middle of Washington state. The good news is that after getting the heater hooked up, finally, it's doing an incredible job. Even when the temperatures got down to zero degrees the other night, it still held a low of 42. And there's some cracks that I need to still tape up, 
and a few things that I can shore up a little bit more, but it looks like we're on the right track, which is great news. Oh, and supper's made, which is even better news. I am looking forward to not only a good meal ahead, but also a few months of winter growing in the greenhouse. This feels like a huge victory and I'm grateful. Mm -hmm.